Ratchet uh, um, train s saw me? How? Daisy. She was awake? And then she collapsed again. I take the responsibility. She was weaker than I realized. Oh. Lie still while I examine you. Pupils dilated. I'm all right. You are far from all right. You have been heavily sedated. Your pulse is very weak. I... I have to... to finish my story. Ratchet can't escape again. Can't escape. Have no fear of that, mademoiselle. Ratchet will not escape. We must hear her story. This woman needs rest. I will let you know when she is recovered enough to continue. But I warn you, it will be some time. I understand, Doctor. Thank you. I have completed my preliminary examination of the deceased. I think that it will interest you. Indeed it will. And I have other witnesses to interrogate. You are right. Let's not put this poor woman in danger. There will be plenty of time for her to finish her story when she has recovered. By all means. Tell me the results of your examination. I do not think that's the right answer. This is wrong, but I'm never far from the truth. That's the right answer. Can you estimate the time of death? Rigor mortis was advanced, but not complete. I estimate the death occurred between midnight and two in the morning. Hmm, that tallies with the witness statements I've collected so far. What is the cause of death? Multiple stab wounds to the upper torso. It's odd there are no signs of a struggle that might indicate one of the first wounds was enough to kill him. It seems that Monsieur Ratchet had taken sleeping pills during the night. Ah, that would explain the lack of defensive wounds. Mr. McQueen and Mr. Masterman told me that Monsieur Ratchet didn't smoke. Can you confirm this? I can't say without a more extensive post-mortem. What can you tell me about the stab wounds? I counted 12 in all. One or two are so slight as to be practically scratches. On the other hand, these three would be capable of causing death. The angle of the wounds is instructive. Most appear to have been struck by a right-handed person. But you see this one under the right armpit. It's not a deadly blow, given the depth, but a right-hander couldn't have done it. It was most certainly struck with the left hand. So, our murderer is left-handed. No, it is more difficult than that, is it not? As you say, Mr. Poirot, some of these other blows are just as obviously right-handed. Do we have a first and second murderer, as the great Shakespeare would put it? The first murderer stabs his victim and exits left, turning off the light. Then a second murderer comes in the dark, does not see his or her work has been done, and stabs a dead body. Magnificent. You think so? <laughs> I'm glad. It sounds to me a little like nonsense. Thank you, Doctor. Excellent work under difficult circumstances. Please let me know when I may speak again with Mademoiselle Locke. Of course. Yes, that's certainly a good place to start. I have 
personally seen some passengers smoking. I just have to remember who they were. I suppose it's likely they will give me the list of who smokes what. Et voilà. Cells did not let me down. Most of the passengers pass by the bar during the day. They eat, drink, write. Maybe I can use this information for my investigation. young man and serves the passengers regularly. Fantastic. Yes, if I ask them to write something trivial, they may do it instinctively with their dominant hand. people use their right or left hand. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. Mademoiselle Debenham, I have a few questions for you. Of course. Let's start with your movements last night. There's little to tell. I went to bed and slept. Did you know the man who was killed? I saw him for the first time during lunch yesterday. Did you notice anything about him? Well, if I believed in auras, I might say he seemed dark. Would you mind writing your address on this paper for me? Not at all. That's it. Mademoiselle Debenham is right-handed. Do you recall what time Mademoiselle Olsen went to get some aspirin from Madame Hubbard? I remember glancing at the clock. She left our room just after 10.30 p.m. Was she away for a long time? About five minutes. That confirms what Madame Hubbard told me. Do you smoke by any chance? No, I never have. Do you own a scarlet nightgown? No, it isn't mine. Whose then? I don't know. What do you mean? You do not say, I have no such thing. You say, it isn't mine. Meaning that you know who it belongs to, am I correct? Oh, I see. No. I woke up this morning about 5am. 
with the feeling that the train had been standing still for a long time. I opened the door, and I saw someone in a scarlet kimono some way down the corridor. Her back was turned. It was impossible to see who it was. I understand. Thank you for your assistance, mademoiselle. Cells did not let me down. Mademoiselle, I am sorry to disturb you, but I need to ask you a few questions. Are you the investigator? I am. We are lucky you are on the train. What do you want to know? I hear, Mademoiselle, that you were the last person to see the murdered man alive. I do not know. It may be so. I opened the door of his compartment by mistake. I was much ashamed. It was a most awkward mistake. You actually saw him? Yeah. He was reading a book. And what did you do after that, mademoiselle? I went into the American lady, Mrs. Hubbard. I asked her for some aspirin, and she gave it to me. I usually carry extra aspirin for the refugees. But I gave mine to a camp in Turkey. They needed it more than me. This is wrong, but I'm... I must admit I'm not right this time. That was easy. Did Mrs. Hubbard ask you whether the communicating door between her compartment and that of Monsieur Ratchet was bolted? Yes. And was it? Yes. And after that, what did you do? After that, I went back to my compartment, took the aspirin, and lay down. That was around 10.50 p.m. Is there anyone else in your compartment? Yeah, a young English lady. Very nice, very amiable. After the train left Vinkovsky, did she leave the compartment? No, I am sure she did not. Why are you so sure if you were asleep? I sleep very lightly. I am used to waking at a sound. I am sure that if she had come down from the berth above, I should have awakened. Did you yourself leave the compartment after that? Not until this morning. Do you have a scarlet silk kimono, mademoiselle? No, indeed. I have a good comfortable dressing gown of Jaeger material. Do you smoke, mademoiselle? No, I can't stand the smell of tobacco. Perhaps you will be so amiable as to write me down your address. With pleasure. Mademoiselle Olsen is indeed right-handed. This was a very interesting conversation, Mademoiselle. I thank you. If you have any other questions, I'll be in my compartment. Good luck, Mr. Poirot. 
Strange, this story. If Mademoiselle Olsen is such a light sleeper, why didn't she tell me about Mademoiselle Debenham getting out of bed? She even made a point to tell me the opposite. That's the right answer. I'll keep an eye on them instead. I'll observe her instead. My little gray cells did not let me down. Monsieur Fauché, may I disturb you for a moment? Of course. How can I help? It is, of course, about the murder of Monsieur Ratchet. Can you tell me your movements last night? I understand. Yesterday evening, I took a break at Vinkovsky Station with Hotaru. We then went to our quarters in the staff accommodations, a section of the luggage car. Freya was there, reading, and I went to bed right after. Freya is there now, I think, and Hotaru is in the kitchen. They can verify my story. What time was this? 11.30 p.m. or a bit after. The snow is beginning to fall heavily. I see. Thank you. Can you write your address on this paper, please? You want to pay me a visit? <laughs> Who knows, Monsieur Fauché? He is right-handed, there can be no doubt. Are you a smoker? I'm trying to quit, but yes, I'm now down to just one pack of cigarettes a week. If you are looking for a heavy smoker, you should talk to Hutaru. Thank you, Monsieur Fauché. I'll come back to you if I have more questions. Come to Poirot, my exquisitely sculpted friend. So, Poirot, I hope you are progressing in your investigation. I have not finished yet, but it is progressing, yes. I still have many questions that must be answered. I will report to you as soon as I can. I should see if the Armstrongs can confirm what Suzanne told me. Good detective after all.
contact your service provider. The number Suzanne called is not in service? A hospital? Detective gets it right. The kidnapper places a ladder under the window to Daisy's room. Then he joins the party. Just one guest in the crowd. He somehow knows when Suzanne leaves the room, then sneaks upstairs. He opens Daisy's window, carries her down the ladder, and vanishes. I should see if the Armstrongs can confirm what Suzanne told me. Ms. Moreau told me she called her mother. Well, why not? I believe they are very close, and the poor woman is not well. She needs some experimental treatment that isn't available yet in France. I won't be long. Take whatever time you need. I spoke with Suzanne. She was phoning her mother. That's why you didn't see her when you went to check on Daisy. Yes, her mother. I tried to call the poor woman earlier that week, but the hospital said she's been in a medically induced coma for more than two months. Suzanne told me she called her mother, but she would have known her mother was in a coma. The number you called that night is no longer in service. I... I... I don't understand. That's... that's the number the hospital gave me to call my mother's room. You told me you were on the phone with your mother when Daisy was abducted. As we said earlier, I didn't pay attention. And was on the phone longer than I said. But since my mother is very ill, she had to leave her home down, Lyon because the treatment is not approved yet in France. She is in an hospital in Boston for a special treatment. I call her every night to check on her. When I came back, Daisy was gone. I'll never forgive myself. Are you sure you called your mother? Yes every night since she was admitted in December. Suzanne, I think you really care for Daisy. If you do, then tell me the truth. You can't have been calling your mother while she's in a coma. My mom really is in the hospital in Boston. She really is in a coma. I, I wasn't calling her. I was on the phone with my boyfriend. Noah. Why lie about it? Why are you panicking? Because he's gone. I haven't heard from him since the night of the kidnapping. I'm afraid he's somehow connected to Daisy's disappearance. That he was just using me somehow. But I swear I talked to him. Yes, for more like 30 minutes that night. So 
He couldn't have kidnapped Daisy at the same time we were talking. But he could have kept you talking so someone else could take Daisy. Yes, you can see why I lied. Can't you? I was afraid you'd suspect me of having something to do with it. You can understand that, can't you? Suzanne, I want to believe you, but you've made it harder to find Daisy. Do you realize that? Oh my god. What have I done? What's most important is not what you've done, but what you do now. Go. I'll be back to talk to you. No more lies, Suzanne. For Daisy. No more lies. Noah. The name might lead us to that little girl. I am on this case now. Whether my captain wants me to be or not. A card from the florist. It's signed N. What's in the glass case? Ah, oh, big surprise, glasses. I expect Suzanne must have gone through a lot of tissues these past weeks. Small jewelry box. By the size, I'm guessing earrings. Why put a key in a jewelry box? An Eiffel Tower keychain, but no key. A toy train. Now here I am on a real one. Okay, Suzanne, let's see what you haven't told me. I can see why Suzanne didn't tell me everything about this, Noah. It's clear when he disappeared that she realized something was very wrong. Can you tell me anything about Suzanne's boyfriend? I know she dated our chauffeur for a while. There was someone else she'd met recently, but I don't recall his name. I 
I imagine these flowers must have been beautiful. Who gave them to you? The gardener. They're getting pretty wilted, but I hate to throw them away. Tell me about your boyfriend. Have you been together long? My boyfriend? Why? He doesn't have anything to do with this. Please, Suzanne, the sooner you answer my question, the sooner we'll be done. His name is Noah Garretti. I met him at a Lunar New Year party in Great Barrington. He... he is a kind and caring person. Although, well, I miss him. He had to go away on business. He should be back. Know anything about Miss Moreau's boyfriend? Her boyfriend? I know she went out with someone for a while there. More recently, I saw a man in a 4x4 who would pick her up on her nights off. He never got out of his car, just waited for her. She did seem to spend more time than usual on the phone these past few weeks. But she worked hard. We weren't going to begrudge her what free time she had. Since Daisy... Since the abduction. She keeps pretty much to herself. I won't be long. Take whatever time you need. Nothing shocks me here. These tire tracks could well be from Suzanne's boyfriend's 4x4. Score. One for the good guys. Tread marks of a four-wheel drive vehicle were found outside the garden on the night of the kidnapping. Noah drives one, doesn't he? Where is he, Suzanne? If you know anything more about him, you have to tell me. I know what you're thinking, but it's impossible. He was very nice to me. He never did anything to make me suspicious. We went out to eat to the movies. Just like a normal couple, he's not the only man in the Berkshires who drives that kind of car. You really didn't notice anything strange about Noah until he vanished? He could get moody at times. As if he had a lot on his mind. In your diary, you say that Noah took you to a cabin in the mountains on Valentine's Day. You read my diary? I'm sorry, but we have to find Daisy. We both want that. So yes, I looked in your diary. I... You're right. He took me to a cabin in the woods. I waited for him in the car. He came out after a few minutes. He was very sweet and apologetic, but... He never explained. We went back to the restaurant for dessert. Did you ever go back to the cabin with him? No, never. So what made Noah drive all the way to a cabin in the middle of nowhere? He left her in the car. Why was he there? This is important. I know it is. I can use Suzanne's directions to the cabin and compare them to the map of the area I have in my car. Thanks to the information Suzanne gave me, I should be able to find the cabin on this map. I got it. The cabin has to be here. I have to find that cabin. I hope I'm not too late.
Okay, here is this famous cabin. Let's investigate. Hello? Is anyone there? Nobody. I can't just waltz in without a warrant. Only I could see what's inside. That barrel is sturdy enough. I could climb on it. Daisy's plush toy. If Fluffy is here, the kidnapper has been here. I have to get inside this cabin. Empty wine bottles. Somebody has been here lately. Ugh, an old hunting trophy starting to molt. I'm not getting through this door by wishing it open. A mall for splitting wood. Perfect for attacking doors. Look at that. A broken door to investigate. No need for a warrant. Some people seem to have played here before. The stove is cold. Nobody's been here recently. A lot of tools. Hmm, I guess somebody noticed the cabin was about to fall down. That's a woman's hairbrush. Did Suzanne actually come in here after all? This bottle comes from the Blue Lagoon. Not really my style, but I'll take it. It's fluffy, no doubt about it. The floor is scratched and worn in this area. Mm, the sofa must have been moved a lot. Damn, it's booby-trapped. If I move, it could go off, and that countdown tells me it wants to go off anyway.
That should do it. Wow, I wonder if that's how close it was. This would have ended my investigation right here. These rods are heading towards the canisters. It must be the trigger for the explosion. I smell a strong, sweet smell. Damn. I think these are filled to the brim with diethyl ether. Incredibly flammable. It looks like the kidnappers wanted to utterly destroy this place and whoever opened this hatch. A wooden crate? I... I have to open it. <sighs> 